Behind me is America's best value in heavy duty trucks. Stay tuned for the rest. This is the F250 STX with the 7.3 liter V8. So as I'm sure you heard from the intro, this is what I'm claiming to be America's best value in heavy duty trucks. And quite frankly, heavy duty trucks are kind of a difficult space to even offer value because they're very, very expensive. Not just very expensive, but they've gotten that way very recently. You see, it wasn't that long ago, 10, 15, 20 years ago, you could get a truck very similar to this for 25, 35, or $40,000 brand new. And now this truck right here is over $60,000. And this is not a heavy, big frills truck with a bunch of fancy technology and big screens and heavy super duty diesel power. This truck is a gasser STX, which is basically an XL with an appearance package. It is four by four. And yes, it does have an eight inch screen, but that is not the big screen. And like I said, $60,000. So the real question is, what do you get for $60,000? And why am I claiming that this is the best value? Well, let's get right into it. So before we go too much further, I think it's important, especially since I'm claiming that this is a value proposition vehicle, that we go over the window sticker, exactly what equipment is on this truck and what it's priced at. So this is our 2024 F-250, single rear wheel, of course, four-wheel drive crew cab with a six and three quarters box. Now this is the 7.3 liter uh, V8, which is the Godzilla motor. It's fairly new. It's Ford's offering to the large V8 space. Basically, it's an opportunity for a company or even a personal individual to mitigate all the potential risk and maintenance upkeep with diesel, but still offering adequate power because this motor right here offers over 450 pound-feet of torque and it's paired with the 10-speed automatic. Now this color here is the iconic silver exterior and our interior is gonna be a medium dark slate cloth. Now when we talk about actual options on this truck, well that 7.3 liter motor is an option and it costs $1,705 over the normal 6.8 liter V8, which is still a great motor. It's actually a very similar architecture and block, but just a little bit different smaller displacement, a little less power. Now this does have the electronic locking rear axle. It is a 7.37 rear axle. You can actually get a higher and lower one depending on what you want. That's $430. And this STX appearance package, which basically takes this truck from a basic work truck with steel wheels and nothing going on to this. You see, we get body colored bumpers. We get this really cool grill. We get the wheels on the side. It really brings up the entire truck and that package costs $5,115. Now this does also have the FX4 off-road package, which offers us skid place and a little bit modified suspension underneath for $495. And those running boards on the side are not part of the STX package. Those are actually an option for $445. Now there is a 400 watt outlet in this truck for $175 and a power sliding rear window for $405. One of the options when we get on the inside is gonna be the upfit switches up above the center mirror. Those are $165. And it does have an upgraded 250 amp alternator for $85. There is remote start on this truck. However, it is an option for $250 and then privacy glass is $30. There's a destination charge of $1,995 for a grand total MSRP of $62,855. That's right, almost $63,000. This truck was built in Kentucky and of course we don't have safety or fuel economy ratings just because they don't have to do them on heavy duty trucks. So let's go up to the front and talk about the overall front end styling next. So now this is the part of the video where we take the time and go over the front end styling on this truck. And yes, I am going to back up to show off not only how tall this truck is, but also how short I am because you guys seem to love that in the comments. Now going over the front end styling, this STX package upgrades us to these beautiful headlamps. They do have this awesome LED C clamp going all the way around with LED reflector headlamps. And yes, there is an incandescent turn signal in there, which just makes it easier to switch out the bulbs if needed. There are fog lights on this one. Being that this is the FX4 and a 4x4, we do get the big, huge tow hooks on the front. And this one, huge uh, Ford logo. And at the bottom, we have a 360 cam because this truck is equipped with a 360 degree camera. And then our Terrebonne Ford front license plate bracket and then a big air dam down at the bottom to give you some increased fuel economy gains. Now, I did want to mention that, like I said, in the window sticker portion, this is the STX package. So this carbonized grill is specific to the STX. These headlights, you don't get these on a basic work truck on 2024. And then when you talk about the wheels, they're unique wheels, they're different. We're gonna go around the side and check those out next. So now here we are talking about the wheel and tire on this truck. And this is our Dueler AT off-road all-terrain tire that comes with the FX4 package. And uh, some of you have mentioned in the comments that I've been mentioning the tire size is wrong. My apologies. It's not just basic millimeters like what, it, uh, what I was thinking on the tire. There's actually a percentage ratio to the rim and the tire uh, showing off the sidewall. So what we have is 275 
by 70 on an R18, which is an R18 rim. So 18 inch blacked out rim, of course, an eight lug pattern. And when we look at our hub here, there's actually a unique always locked logo because if you're used to the old Super Duties of yore, you used to have to get out and turn the hubs or maybe you had automatic hubs, but you still had to lock them to put it in real four wheel drive and get a front locker. This one is fully automatic. No need to turn it at all. In fact, it even says on here, do not turn. So a nice welcome upgrade to the Super Duty. So we're right here and I did want to quickly note because people love to make fun of the new Super Duty and specifically with the step on the side. However, I am a perfect example of exactly why Ford needed to put this step. As these trucks get bigger and bigger and more capable and of course taller, short guys like me just can't figure it out. So it's a good idea to have this step because you can jump in here, grab whatever you need and then jump back down. Now there is, I will admit, a funny little step that you can get, which is an option that goes underneath and then you can click it and then you have two steps going up to the truck bed. Man, if that's not a hint that these trucks don't need to be this tall, I don't know what is. I just thought it was funny and I thought I'd show it off to you guys. Let's go around back and talk about towing capability and of course how usable that bed is. All right, so here we are at the back of the 2024 Super Duty and back here we've got a ton of capability. We'll start out down here at the tow hitch. It, yes, it is a three inch receiver. If you're somebody going from a half ton to a three quarter ton like this truck here, you will have to buy new hitches because on a half ton, you get a two inch receiver. On these big trucks, you get a three inch receiver. And this truck, even with this gas motor and this configuration is capable of towing 18,000 pounds conventional towing. And to me, that almost sounds a little silly just because I grew up with a 2010 F-350 Power Stroke. That truck was capable of towing 12,500 pounds of conventional towing. Here we are with a gasser base model truck that can now tow in excess 5,000 pounds more than that truck could. It's just a crazy world we live in. These trucks are getting out of this world capable. And that's a good sign for you because that means if you put a 10,000 pound camper, which is the majority of my customers, what they tow with this truck, you know that you've got an absolute ton of room for safety and being mindful. Of course, if you buy an F-150 with a 10,000 pound towing rating, it can tow a 10,000 pound trailer. But if you're gonna be doing it often, and especially cross country, you do wanna probably look at something this size just to make sure that you're leaning on the side of safety. Now, with that being said, towing is a joy because you do have blind spot monitoring on this truck. And yes, it does cover the trailer length as well. And we do have the towing apps inside the truck that we'll get to a little bit later that allow you to uh, program in the individual trailer. And of course, set maintenance reminders, which is a big deal. Now back here, same body color bumper we had. We do have ultrasonic parking sensors. When we look at the D-rings down here at the bottom, they are absolutely massive. So no matter what size trailer you have, you can definitely hook it up. And then a seven and a four pin connector here for all the trailer wiring you would need. And there's a lock on the spare tire drop. We do have some lights here for the license plate bracket. And underneath there is a full size matching spare tire, which I absolutely love. And of course, Super Duty is embroidered right into the uh, tailgate here. It's stamped right in. I love when brands do that, it's just helpful. And on the tailgate here, we do have a little LED light. So this light will shine down on the hitch area. That way at nighttime, if you're hooking up or disconnecting a trailer, you can do it very, very easily. And there is a backup camera right here. The Ford logo is much smaller on the back than it was on the front. But of course, remember, there's Super Duty stamped right in. This drops down. It is not damped, but it is an aluminum tailgate, so it's nice and light. On this Super Duty here, we don't have the clamping points like we do on an F-150, but we do have the measuring tape on the end here. So right on this cap, they've done centimeters and inches, and it goes all the way across, so you can measure all the way up to 61 inches or 155 centimeters. Very helpful. This one does have the Rhino Liner spray and bed liner here from Terrebonne Ford. And then we have some tie downs and or a bottle opener, just like we have on the F-150 as well. Now getting into this truck bed is made a lot simpler by these corner steps that Ford has now implemented. You step right in and you can step right up onto the bed. Now, once we're up here, it's actually a very nice uh, usable bed. This one here being six and three quarters is very, very large. If you want to do a camper top or a tonneau cover, there's definitely plenty of room for it. But there is this really cool etching right here that says 25 cubic yards with a little silhouette of the truck. Just a very cool Easter egg that Ford has included on this truck. Now, as far as in the bed amenities go, this one is equipped with LED lights with a little button where you can push that. It turns on the cab lights. It turns on the lights here. And yes, there is a camera right up here on this light here. And as we saw when we went over the window sticker, this rear window is power. And it's also frameless, so it looks good. There is box link back here. There are none of the box link chucks. They might be in the cab of the truck. We'll look a little bit later. But box link accessory comes standard. And then, of course, we do have four tie downs, one for each corner for tying stuff down. So overall, the bed is very useful. And I don't know if I mentioned this when I was getting up here, but they put these cute little like C-shaped handles here to be able to grab and get into the bed very easily. Makes it a lot simpler for getting in and out of this truck. Let's go ahead into the uh, back seats. 
and see how comfortable this work truck is next. Well, now here we are in the second row of this F-250. And uh, I did want to quickly note the reason I started outside is to show you exactly how high of a climb it is to get into this truck. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. This truck has extreme capability. And if you're somebody buying this truck, you understand that. But getting in here can be a chore if you're somebody who uh, is elderly. So the first step is the sidestep, and it's very nice to have. I couldn't imagine having this truck without the sidestep. There is a handle here to help you get in. And of course, you can climb right up. And there's another step, and then the floor is slightly higher than that step. So bam, three steps, and you're in the back seat fairly comfortably. We're going to shut this door. That way you guys can see me pretty good. And in here, once you get up here, it's actually very, very comfortable, even in this work truck. Keep in mind, this is an STX. It's not going to be your fancy luxury truck with heated seats and a panoramic roof and all that crap. But it is very, very comfortable back here. So speaking of the door, we've got a toddler cup holder. We do have this nice hard plastic up here on the top part of the door. And I say nice hard plastic because in a truck like this, you don't need soft touch. In fact, you probably don't want soft touch just because it's going to stain and all that stuff. Now down here, we have a speaker grill. We've got room enough for two water bottles and then a little cubby here. And of course, those nice four door handles where you just reach in and grab it. Super simple. As far as connectivity goes, it's a good conversation because we've got two USB-Cs, a 12 volt. And then if we flip this down, we reveal two cup holders. Now these seats do flip up out of the way and reveal a flat load floor, which is really nice to see in a truck like this. Oh, and before we go any further, there are latch points back here uh, on the two most outboard seats. So if for whatever reason you were using this for your family application, you can actually put two car seats back here. And I'm sure this bench is wide enough that if you wanted to use the seat belt for the center one, you could actually put three car seats. And when you flip this up, it does reveal a flat load floor back here. There's a little power inverter box for that 400 watt outlet that we'll go see up in the front right now. So here we are in the front seats of the F-250 STX. And uh, real quickly, I wanted to show off the key fob because yes, it is a physical key that turns. Now there is the Ford Pass app that you can use to remote start, lock, unlock, and of course, uh, see vehicle history ports and GPS locations and all that stuff. And it is free, uh, which is a huge benefit. I mean, but you still do when you get in, have to put jump in and turn this actual key. Now I'm going to leave the engine off for now, just so that way you guys can actually hear me talk decently, but I'm going to go over the overall features in here uh, real quickly with you. Now over on the left hand side, we've got our lock unlock for the driver's door. We've got our power mirrors and of course power window controls. The front two are auto up down. And over here we have our external light controls. So we've got a rear cargo light button as well as our headlights and fog light control and then our interior brightness control. And then underneath that our electronic parking brake. And yes, the Ford Super Duty does have an electronic parking brake. It's very nice to see. It's a warm welcome feature. Over here, we've got a nice soft touch kind of leather wrapped over at the elbow, which makes it very comfortable. And then the steering wheel is not leather wrapped, but it's this kind of like hard urethane. Uh, it's good, definitely a durable material, but it doesn't have any sort of squish if you're used to that. Now there is actually some texture down at the bottom of the steering wheel, so it's not a super basic stripped out interior. And then over here on the left of the steering wheel, we've got our cruise control and a quick mute button, as well as our volume up down and a voice control. And then over on the right, we've got our buttons for our phone, our seek track, and then the buttons for our 4.2 inch uh, productivity display, which is a very nice display. You've got trip computers, you've got your fuel economy, uh, you've got all sorts of measurements. There's even a comm screen where you can just turn the thing off but most people will leave it on the digital speedometer. Now, one of the nice parts about having a screen like that is that you can actually see things like your transmission temperature and of course your oil temperature and all the things you would need for heavy duty towing if you do something like that, especially going through the mountains, it's good to see that information. Now, there are still tactile button or uh, dials that I love, like the speedometer on the right, the tachometer on the left. And of course, we've got a oil pressure, a coolant temperature, our fuel gauge and a transmission uh, temperature, all old school dials that you can quickly see and read and know if there's an issue. Um, and then when we actually look to our right of the steering, we've got our trailer brake controller. Now, one thing to note is that all Super Duties are still going to come with a column shifter. There is no center console shift, which if you're used to these trucks is not a big deal. You've come used to having the column shifter, but you push the manual mode and you can row through the 10 speed automatic yourself if you'd like. Below that, we've got our four wheel drive control and this vehicle is equipped with four high and four low as well as a rear locker. Um, and I did want to mention the four low because one of the things that the GM twin trucks have done is actually get rid of four low as a standard. If you get four wheel drive, you have to make sure that you're getting and paying extra for a four low transfer case, which is just kind of silly, especially in a heavy duty truck like this. You want to make sure you can go into low range, especially if you're in like an off-road situation and that you have all the gearing you need. Now, looking at this display, this is the older uh, eight inch display, and it's actually still a great display. It has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, it does, of course, have AM, FM, and satellite radio. And like I said, it connects to your Ford Pass. 
Now, when we go under driver assistance, you're going to see all of the safety features that this truck is equipped with. For example, it does have pre-collision emergency braking, as well as blind spot monitoring, and of course that trailer side view uh, where you can turn that and you can see both sides of the trailer. Um, there's also a exit warning, which basically lets you know when you're leaving the truck, hey, by the way, there might be something in your back seat. And then under the trailer app, this is where we have our trailering apps. You can save trailers in here and you can set up maintenance reminders. So if you know that every 5,000 miles you have to grease a bearing or something, you can program it in and it saves those trailers and it knows right when you plug in which trailer you're plugging in. It kind of uses a little code for each trailer and saves it in the computer. So you don't have to press it every time you plug in a trailer. Once you get it set up, it does it completely by itself. The nice part about that is in your center display and on this screen and even in your Ford Pass app, it'll remind you, hey, make sure you grease the bearings on that trailer. You just went 5,000 miles with it. That is a feature that is absolutely awesome and great for those of you that are going to be using your trailers a lot. The other feature, and this is something that you can use for the Ford Pass app as well, is your trailer light check. Once you hook up a trailer on the back, you can press trailer light check in your app and then go back there and actually see all the lights flash and blink and turn on and off. So that way you know all your lights are working and you don't have to have a partner come in here and flip any switches or dials for you. Um, also under features, we've got our digital owner's manual. These trucks are getting rid of the paper owner's manual in favor for the digital one. And it's actually quite nice because you can either search up uh, an individual feature or you can browse and there's videos, there's paragraphs, there's photos. So everything that you could have a question about in this truck is gonna pop up through the digital owner's manual. And there is actually the Ford Assistant in this truck. So of course you can say things like, hey Ford, and it will do things like uh, call somebody for you or set the radio to a specific uh, channel if you'd like. Now, one of the things Ford has not strayed away from, and I absolutely love it, and I've said it time and time again, is that there is still a volume and a tuning knob as well as a row of physical buttons. And this one is equipped with the old school climate control, which is basically how hard do you want it, where do you want it, and do you want it hot or cold? One of the most basic systems, it's been out forever, and I absolutely love that it's here in the Super Duty. Now, as far as connectivity goes, we've got a lot of it. We've got a 400 watt plug right here on the passenger side, as well as a 12 volt just above that. And down here we have another 12 volt, as well as a USB-C and a USB-A. And there is a shelf down here. And you notice that this is the bench seat configuration, but it is a nice soft armrest. Some vehicles, when you get a bench seat, the armrest is just absolutely unusable. So nice soft touch armrest, a uh, good spot for your phone, two cup holders here. This opens up to reveal a decent amount of storage. You can't necessarily put a laptop or a tablet in here, but that's not what that area is for. Because when we flip this up, of course it reveals our third seat belt but there's storage that's lockable with a key underneath this center spot and this is where you can put your clipboards your laptops any of those larger work-related items that you may have and when we flip this down it's super easy we just push this little switch here and this whole seat folds back down into an armrest making it nice and simple now up here we do have a quick home row buttons we can push the camera button and pull up our 360 cam anytime we'd like as well as our hazard switches we've also got our traction control and downhill assist as well as this nice big storage cubby up on top of the dash. Now when we look here, we've got another uh, second glove box above our normal one with Super Duty embroidered right into this uh, metallic finish on the dash. And then of course the glove box is lockable with the key as well. You open that up and we've got a ton of room for stuff in there. And there is actually the spot here to turn off your passenger airbag. I think the next spot I wanna go is underneath the hood and talk about the powertrain on this truck next. So here we are underneath the hood of the 2024 F-250, and this is our 7.3 liter V8. This is the Godzilla motor. Ford introduced this motor a few years ago as a great alternative to the diesel options of the world. And really this is a commercial grade motor. They intended this to replace what a lot of people's complaints were about the diesel. And really the problems are with modern DPF filters and exhaust gas recirculation and everything else that goes into those modern diesels. They're a lot more complicated and expensive to maintain for a lot of miles than a gasoline motor. And on top of that, diesel fuel just keeps getting higher and higher. So this uses regular 87 fuel, makes a god a lot of power. That's why it's called the Godzilla, because of the amount of power. And I'm excited to see in the future when somebody eventually throws this into a Mustang with a supercharger on top, and it just makes an absolute ton of power. Now this is a very tall engine bay. However, there's a lot of room to work. It's not anything like the Power Stroke. If you look under the hood of a modern Power Stroke, it is just crammed full and there's barely any space to work. Even with this large displacement 7.3 liter V8, there is still a ton of room to work. And one of the things I love is out here on the front, they've actually positioned a step and a handle to get up here and get in exactly to the engine bay, exactly where things are at. Now, as far as maintenance items are concerned, we've got our battery over here to the left, as well as our air box, and also a oil dipstick over here. All of our coil packs and oil fill is exposed, nice and easy to get to. This does have hydraulic power steering, so the fluid for that is right here, along with your washer fluid, your coolant, and your brake fluid. But speaking of how much room there is, you can just see right down to the ground, right over here by the steering column. And that really goes to show exactly how much room is left in here for more complicated systems like, for example, that power stroke. So overall, I'd say that this is a great 
adequate powertrain for the 2024 F-250. And I think it offers a great value because the diesel option is a 10, and if you get the high output $12,000 option, this one here is under $2,000 to get, and I think it's well worth it. And of course, if you guys are interested in this exact truck, it is available for sale here at Terrabone Ford. My information is down in the description, but you don't just have to get this truck. I also can do custom orders for you. One of the best parts about my dealership and myself is that I can do remote deals for you in pretty much any state. I can register them to all 50 states and I can send them to all 50 states. Now there is a freight charge associated, but if you want to avoid that, of course, feel free to come on down. I'll pick you up from the airport. We'll go have a cool Cajun lunch. You'll experience some awesome Cajun culture. And of course, you get to drive your brand new truck home to wherever you're from. So with that being said, let's get into my final thoughts on this truck next. So what do you guys think is the 2024 F-350 the best value in heavy duty trucks? I definitely think so. And hopefully in this video, I've explained to you exactly why I think that. But what do you guys think? I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. And of course, if you've liked this video and all the other videos on my channel, make sure to actually go down to the bottom and physically hit the like button. Engagement really helps my videos be, seen, be shown to more people who like to see them. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but I have been putting in a lot of effort to make sure that I'm bringing you good, high quality content, and I'm planning on bringing you more. So if you're up for more of that, make sure to subscribe and hit the notifications bell because I am planning on bringing you, of course, new car videos just like this one, used car videos, and eventually I plan on going to car shows and showing you guys the newest products as soon as they come out. So like I said, subscribe and hit the notifications bell to see that. And if you've stayed this long, you already know what time it is. It is late video lighting nerds. All right, late video lighting nerds, let's get right into it. If you're new to the channel and specifically late video lighting nerds club, this is our candid blooper style where we go around and check out the headlights and taillights. It's quite fun actually. So we're gonna turn the ignition on, turn our headlights on, hit the, make sure our little lights are on. Yep, so let's go check out the headlights and fog lights. Now, of course, keep in mind, these are gonna be your low beams. We already talked about the LED daytime reflector light, but there's your low beams. And of course, there's our fog light. And let's turn on the high beams and check those out next. There's our high beams. For those of you that don't know, it is a DOT law and rule that they turn off the fog lights, or at least wire it in a way that when the headlight or the high beams come on, the fog lights, of course, turn off. So there's your high beams, nice bright LED lights offering you a lot of visibility. And then, of course, checking out the tail lights. These are incandescent bulbs. They just look like they're LED using a diffuser. They look really, really good. Well, guys, thanks for watching and have a great day.